I'm born and brought up in Germany in that those days that we had still East and West, so I was born and brought up in the Eastern part. And I learned as a child Western violin. I was singing. But as a child I could never imagine that music really could be something which would fill later my whole day and become even profession occupation kind of thing. That actually happened only when I was in the beginning of my 20s, I came to India. So again, to not too much to go into details, um, we had this reuniting of East and West and that was uh, sort of necessary because before in the East we couldn't go out. We were kind of locked up because of the political system. So I was just becoming 19, 20 in this time. You know, you break out, you, you go out of your house and then these whole things are happening. And the first country where I ever went out of Germany was India. Coming from East Germany, coming to India was not that much of a difference. Because both of the societies have been living at that time, you know, in a quite closed own kind of setup. So everybody had to struggle to get his own whatever things, you know. The same like in East Germany here, there was only one type of coke. Thumbs up, there was only one type of car. At that time, Ambassador, I think Maruti Zazuki came just a little bit later. So we had the same situation there. When I came to India the first time, it felt quite familiar. I mean, the simple way of living. And the whole opening up of materialism, which followed up then in the 90s and of course in the last, whatever, 10, 15 years, more and more. We had that very fast when the reuniting of East and West was happening. And that's, I take a little turn before coming back to India. That is, by the way, something, you know, the people often ask me, how is it coming, you are living in Calcutta, you are living in India, while you could live in Germany, where normally people from India try to go out to have better ways of means of living, more material success and things. So my personal journey that has played a role, I'm grown up in the simple setup of East Germany, and then overnight, suddenly we got reunited. We had overnight all the luxury of wonderful cars, I don't know, name it, hundreds of chocolates, any kind of food, fruits, and, and things we before never got at any time of the day, any time of the year. Now, two things which I just recognized over the coming, just within a few months. The first thing, of course, you need money to buy all these wonderful things. So, and secondly, I mean, you get easily tired once you have everything at disposal at any time. You know, before it used to be something really, really magic. Once maybe at Christmas we got a special chocolate from the other side of Germany because some relatives had sent it or so it was really. And now we have it every day. The question is only, okay, what next? That makes it actually very easy for me to say what I have found here. This is for me a treasure. This is a treasure which is really endless. It's not getting bored from one day to the next. And, you know, there are a lot of friends coming, Indian students or whatever. They really see what I'm doing and then often they, they say, thank you so much for your sadhana. And you know what I'm answering on that? I say, thank you so much for keeping the place open so I could come and work on that. Because it is a wonderful thing. Now, when I came to India, the first years, I was always fighting with my friends, seeing that they are so much behind everything, but neglecting this kind of treasure, in my eyes, treasure. Today, of course, I understand also would have, would have been born and brought up here, the same would have happened. My parents also would have told, son, you have learned maybe music as a child, but now life is getting serious, so choose doctor, engineer or lawyer. Well. This, this, luckily, I, I could choose for myself a bit different. So come back, I came the first time to India in the beginning of 90s. And it was actually the attraction of music, of Indian classical music, which I had heard just on a few tapes. And uh, that again, in connection with uh, some spiritual setup, you can say. My uh, living partner at that time, she got initiation in some meditation, uh, Pass, you can say. So I was a bit curious, what, what is this? I mean, I, I've always been into music, art and, and things. So they had some tapes of, for me at that time, strange music. But somehow I found it quite 
interesting. I continued listening. So those days, later I found out, okay, this is Hindustani classical music. There were some tapes of Enrajam. There were some tabla solo of Sakir Hussain. I couldn't decode it at that time. I just found, my God, what is this tabla playing going on? I was quite sure there must have been technical sampling or whatever behind it. We couldn't imagine that something could be done by fingers. I came to Calcutta and uh, Orlindada, who is still today, long years after I left Tabla Plain, a very, very close friend. And it's one of the, what will I say, one of the personalities, artists, musician, who in spite of all the success and being one really of the foremost musicians now in, in classical music, such a simple human being. So. I started learning tabla at those days and like we are right now in the concert season, winter season, I was running from A to Z each and every concert, soaking it in. And at that point of time, I had heard the Wiener only on some recordings. And I was very eager to hear it live. So I was knocking and asking each and everybody, is there any Ruder Wiener player? No, there's nobody. I mean, I did know that already. Zia Mundi and Dagesap had passed away already in 1990. And my future Kansap, uh, I didn't know he was there, but I even didn't know exactly where he was living. I had some CDs and that was all. So I went on knocking and listening. And finally, it was in Dovalin Music Conference. Somebody of my friends pointed out, he said, see, this guy over there, and that guy he pointed at was again some Western student. He said, he is playing root again. I said, well, okay, then let's find out. So the person was uh, a Swedish uh, man. He was quite old already. And uh, so his name was Peter Hennix. Peter has passed by now also. So I started to asked him and didn't go from his side. So he said, okay, this guy is somewhat interested. Okay, you come next day. And um, then practically when whatever time he spent here in Calcutta, I, I didn't leave him. I was always, you know, going and seeing the instrument. He had come to Calcutta to repair his instrument. And what I had heard before already, there was one shop in Calcutta which was very specialized on making old string instruments like Sobaha or Vina. At that shop, the name was Kanal Alim Brother in Chitpur Road, they had that shop, but that shop had already closed in 95. So it was already too late, that shop was not more existing. So while running around with him, I learned already that is a huge problem, even you want to play the instruments, to find the instrument, because there is no real maker. So there was one shop uh, here in Calcutta who was at least ready to touch the already existing Venus, because that is another problem. If you would go now and try to get a Wiener, you can ask in whatever different uh, instrument maker shop, like the famous here in Roy for Sita, Heyman for Sarod, they would all say, I'm sorry. First of all, they wouldn't know anymore how to make it. Secondly, nobody wants to touch it. Because of the connection with Rudra, there's a lot of uh, Let's call it respect, let's not call it fear. If you don't do the right uh, pujas, you are bringing a lot of unlucky things into your life. So that was already in the middle of 90s, 20 years and more than 20 years ago, the situation. Now what happened with me, um, after so long listening and looking what he was doing with the Vina, and he had learned for several decades, first with Ustad Ziyam Omnindaga, later with uh, Asad Ali Kansab. So he said, okay, if you are so interested, 
why are you not coming to Delhi? I will introduce you to Khan Sahib and you can just see what's happening. Now I was a bit in dilemma because uh, I was very well established here in Calcutta, learning tabla, being with all the students. It's a nice community, it's like a family. And I said, okay, fine, this is one of a kind of chance, so let me go there. And um, the whole meeting and things that, you know, you could fill an evening with telling these stories. But I will, of course, shortcut. So I ended up, I ended up coming to the music room of my future Guruji. And I mean, just that moment, I already perceived, okay, fine. You have somewhat come home. And Kansa was checking me out. Okay, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So you're learning some tabla, mm -hmm. some vocal. Mm -hmm. Okay, take the tampura, some tampura in the corner, tune it and sing. So I was a bit like, mm -hmm, okay, <laughs> tuned it and he was kind enough, okay, you just sing sa. <laughs> okay, I can manage that. So I was doing my best and then he was sitting there listening, half attention and then just looking at me, he said, see what you are singing there, just singing the sa. And he pointed out on his carpet where he was sitting on, your sa is like this and he pointed a big kind of ornament. But can you sing this? And he pointed at the center of it. And that was really, I always remember that it was already there the teaching started. And that was also essential what in the way how he was teaching. He was always pointing out to make it more perfect, more on the point. If anything, you bring it in one sentence, what about Wiener playing is perfection, perfection, perfection. Any instrument but especially on this instrument. So we took our talks and a little bit of time and there was, of course, things are not so easy to study from such a start, from such a, let's say, legendary kind of musician who come really from an orthodox tradition. They were rather hard nuts to crack. Now, Kansa Maigruji at that time, point of time, he had already gone through all the stages of times so he saw, if you are not open to teach, whoever comes who is ready, whether from the West or the East, it's gone. So that was our plus point, you know, to approach him. But still, he said, see, our tradition, in our tradition we are teaching in the way of, first you have to learn vocal, you have to tune your own, very own instrument, you have to train your hearing. Then you would take the lighter instrument, the sita, to train your fingers. And when you have done that for several years and everything is fit, then you might be considered fit for the Wiener. Now my friend who brought me over there had already warned me that this is going to happen. And being already in the middle of my 20s, of course the question and then also coming up down from the West and you know, not being the whole time here. So he said, see, there's basically only one thing you can do if you really want to play Wiener right now. You have to come with an instrument, put it in front of your Guru's feeds and then ask him, please teach. And I was very ready to do that, but there was no instrument. <laughs> so he returned to Calcutta and started knocking on each and every kind of door where possibly there would be maybe even some old instrument. And in that way, uh, we found somebody who was willing to sell a used instrument, which was in a terrible condition must have been at that point of time maybe 50, 60 years old. Nobody had taken care of it, you know, no strings on it. I mean, it was a lot of things to repair. But anyway, it was an instrument. So I took whatever money I had, bought this instrument. Even I had to ask my mother to send something more from Germany. And uh, then with this instrument, I went to the shop of, uh, his name is Mangra Prashad Sharma. This was the person I told before who was the only one who was ready to touch at least the window. He didn't know much about Vina. There's one Chitpur Road. Huh? There's, he also in Chitpur Road, the same place. Uh, no, he is in Amhar Road. It's near Shelter Station, some crossing. So I came with this instrument to his shop. I mean, this shop is what, it's the incarnation of all, you know, what you can face in Calcutta. It's on the noisiest kind of road you can imagine. Now you imagine this kind of silent instrument when you have to do a fine work like the Javari or something. And they do it all over there. So anyway, I came with the instrument and Peter, the old Wiener student, he instructed me a bit what at least, you know, to do so it 
becomes basically playable. And then I was sitting for maybe one month. Every day I was going to this shop from noontime when he opened up until whatever, 9, 10 when he closed up and was just watching, you know, what, what he's doing whenever he had time to take the Wiener and then we worked something on it. So then finally one day came where he said, okay, that's it, what I can do for it. I mean, and uh, yeah, he took a, uh, what do you call, a flower, uh, uh, I don't get the word now, the flower uh, mala. So he took a flower mala and a good sip of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> With this instrument, I, I went back to Delhi and I did, uh, as my friend had recommended, I came to Kansa, but I said, okay, Kansa, please, I want to learn Vila. <laughs>